This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Well, today we launch a three-day series here on The Inner Life in which we'll be unpacking the Nicene Creed to help us all more firmly and assuredly proclaim our faith at Mass and live out our faith in our day-to-day lives. Joining us as our guide for this three-day series is our spiritual director, Father John Paul Erickson. Father Erickson is the parochial vicar at Nativity of Our Lord Catholic Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome, Father. So good to be with you for this three-day series. Oh, Patrick, delighted to be with you as always. Thrilled for the invitation. Back in the uh, retranslation of the Mass that came to us in 2011, um, there was a shift in how we began the creed. Can you talk a little bit about that? We went from we believe to I believe. Yeah, great, great question. So one of the principles of the 2011 retranslation, really, was a desire to be more faithful to the Latin text. Now, that's a tricky, slippery subject, because anytime you translate words, any words, you're going to lose something in translation. Who was it that said every translator is a traitor? Words themselves and the culture that they come from, they have meaning that go beyond the literal meaning of the word. Uh, So acknowledging that fact, it still was the case that the church felt that it was important to go back to the original texts of some of these texts, liturgical texts, and and to be more faithful and precise to what the actual words mean. And so to your very point, the creed, which begins in Latin, credo and unum, credo literally means I believe. The phrase we believe would be something different, a different ending to that word credo. But credo means I believe. And so there was a desire to get back to that original meaning. However, it's very important to point out, very important to point out that this, the principal I, that is the letter I, the principal I in credo is really not us. The principal I is the mother, the church. I believe I believe. Remember, we as Catholics believe that the church is a body. And in some sense, you can see why it was translated we believe before, because when you say we believe, you're expressing this is a communal truth. We all believe this together. But the fact is, is that what we believe together must comport with and flow from the I that is the church as the bride of Christ. She believes in Jesus. She believes in her Savior. And we are Christians, we are Catholics, insofar as our own personal ascent of faith lines up with that eye of the church. So it's interesting. I, I would offer that that counter to what one might think, this move from we believe to I believe is much less about this has to be a personal ascent of, of Father Erickson when he goes to the church. And it's more about, I think, oppressing upon us the truly communal bodily nature of the church, that we all comprise the one thing, the one thing that is the church. So it's a long-winded answer, but but that's that's where it all comes from. That is fascinating, Father. I, I had many times heard, you know, kind of the linguistic argument of why it's I believe, because it's closer to credo. I had many times heard that, well, yes, we need this personal, uh, personal assent to faith, this personal belief, this personal trust, which is all true. But I love that, that it is actually, it is a communal, because if there's anything that I was a little, uh, that I thought was maybe not quite up to what I what I had hoped for in the retranslation um, is that did we lose the communal nature of this? You know, and yeah, and you just rescued that for me. So thank you. No, my, I, I, it was a revelation to me too. And and to be perfectly frank, it, I think probably I got it from Benedict the Sixteenth, honestly. Uh, but it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's not it, a bad it's, place I, to get it from. <laughs> no, Amen. I've recognized more and more that so many of our problems, both as a world and as a church is we think of relationships and and these these profoundly powerful things like faith as profoundly private you know yeah, these are private yeah, matters exactly. and in some sense i th- i think it it's paired up really with kind of the protestant you know reformation revolution in the sense of in the sense of we have a direct line to god there's this personal relationship with god which is which is salvific and necessary, but perhaps one truth that maybe some of the reformers might have lost in their, in their fighting against the, the abuses of, of the hierarchy and of, of the, of the church, what was lost in that was we're a body, we're a body of people and both on the natural level and the supernatural level, we are joined together. There is no 
There's no merit and there's no sin that is not communal. Everything is joined to other people, everything. And that includes our faith. This joining together by means of the Holy Spirit, the unity of the Holy Spirit, that allows the church as a body, as a body to say, I believe. The church says, I believe. This entire episode of The Inner Life is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening.